We're on problem 70. Problem 70. If x plus 5 is greater than 2, x plus 5 is greater than 2, and x minus 3, x minus 3 is less than 7, the value of x must be between which of the following pairs of numbers? Well, for this top one, let's just subtract 5 from both sides of this equation. So if you subtract 5 from both sides, you get x is greater than, what's 2 minus 5? x is greater than minus 3. And let's, for this bottom one, let's add 4 to both sides of this equation. So x minus 3, I'm uh, sorry, let's add 3 to both sides of this equation. So x minus 3 plus 3, that's x, is less than, what's 7 plus 3? 10. So x is greater than minus 3, I just wrote this the other way around, and it's less than 10. Sorry, x is greater than minus 3 and less than 10. So that's A. Problem 71. A gym class can be divided into eight teams with an equal number of players on each team. Eight, and that means you get an equal number. Or into 12 teams with an equal number on each team. 12 teams with an equal number. Fair enough. What is the lowest possible number of students in the class? So essentially it's saying that the number of students in the class is divisible by both 8 and 12. So what they want to know is what's the smallest number that's divisible by both 8 and 12. And that's the least common multiple of 8 and 12. That might ring a bell from middle school. So what's the smallest number that's divisible by 8 and 12? So let's think of 8's multiples. 8 isn't divisible by 12. 16 isn't divisible by 12. But what about 24? Well, yeah, sure, 24 is divisible by 12. So the least common multiple is 24 which is b and clearly you can divide a gym class into two groups of 8 or, or sorry three groups of 8 or two groups of 12 72 72 at least 2 thirds of the 40 members of a committee must vote in favor of a resolution for it to pass so at least 2 thirds of 40 to pass Pass. What is the greatest number of members who could vote against the resolution and still have it pass? So essentially they're saying, what is the least number that we need to have it pass? And then 40 minus that is the greatest number that could vote against it. So we have to have at least 2 thirds of 40. So what's 2 thirds times 40? Well, that's equal to, what, 80 over 3? And that's 3 goes into 80, let's figure it out. 3 goes into 8, 2 times, 2 times 3 is 6, 20, 3 times goes into 20, 6 times, 6 times 3 is 18. Then you bring down a 2, bring down a 0. So it's going to just keep repeating. So you have to have at least 26.6 .6 people vote for it. But clearly you can't have a, 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 a 0.6 person vote for it. And 26 people isn't going to be good enough, so you need at least 27 people. At least 27 need to vote for. Vote for. So if 27 are going to vote for, how many are going to vote against? Well, that means, let's see, 40 minus 27, that means 13 against, which is E. That is the greatest number, because if, if a, a larger number voted against it, you would have less people voting for it. Problem 73. 73. In the Johnson's monthly budget, the dollar amounts allocated to household expenses, food, so I'll say H for household expenses, F for food, and miscellaneous items, and miscellaneous items, are in the ratio of 5 to 2 to 1. Fair enough. Respectively, if the total amount allocated to these three categories is $1,800, so 1800 is the total, what is the amount allocated to food? So we could view it this way. If miscellaneous, so food is going to be twice times miscellaneous, right? Food is equal to twice times the miscellaneous. And household items is going to be equal to five times the miscellaneous. So household items is going to be five times the miscellaneous. So we could say that household plus food plus miscellaneous is going to be equal to 1,800. And this ratio tells us that food is two times miscellaneous, household is five times miscellaneous. So let's just substitute that in. Five times miscellaneous plus two times miscellaneous plus miscellaneous is equal to 1,800. 
And let's see, 5 plus 2 is 7, plus 1 is 8. 8 times miscellaneous is equal to 1,800. And so m is equal to 1,800 over 8. And let's see, what, is that? what does that turn into? That is equal to 900 over 4, which is equal to 450 over 2. That's how my brain works. I have to just go in steps. And what's 450 divided by 2? That's 2. 25. That's miscellaneous. They want to know how much is allocated to food. Well, food is two times miscellaneous, right? Food is two times miscellaneous. So 2 times 225, 2 times 225 is equal to, we're back at 450. And that is choice D. Problem 74. 74. There are four more women than men on Centerville's Board of Education. So four more women. So women is equal to men plus four. If there are 10 members on the board, how many are women? So we know that men plus women is equal to 10. And we want to solve for women. So let's, let me solve for men here and then substitute there. So you get men is equal to 10 minus the women. We could substitute that back there. We get women is equal to m, or the men, which is, we just figured out is 10 minus the women, plus 4. Plus 4. Sorry, plus 4. My brain was jumping ahead. So let's add w to both sides. So you get 2w is equal to 10 plus 4, which is equal to 14. w is equal to 7. There are 7 women on the board, so that's d. Problem 75. After this one, after this video, I think I'm going to have to call it for a night and go watch a movie or something. 75. Leona bought a one year $10,000 certificate of deposit that paid an interest at an annual rate of 8%. So, one year, $10,000, and it paid an, a rate of 8%. Of 8%. Compounded semi annually. What was the total amount of interest paid on the certificate at maturity? So when you say compound semi-annually, that means you, you collect half of the interest every half year. And that's kind of, that's something, I don't know if the GMAT, they should be expecting you to know that. That's something you, you probably would learn in business school. But anyway, so after six months, after six months, you're going to get, you're going to get 4% on the original amount. So you're going to have $10,000. And you're going to get 4% of this. And so they're going to owe you, see what was, so we paid a compounded seminar. What was the total amount of interest paid on the certificate at maturity? So they're going to pay you 10,000, 10,000 times half of it, because it's only six months have gone by. Eight months, 8% is for the full year. So for half the year, you're going to get times 4%. And then, so 10, 000, you're going to get 10, so let's see, 10,000 times 4%, let's, what is that? 10,000 times 4.04. Let's look at it this way. 4 times 10,000 is 40,000. We have two numbers behind the decimal place. So it's $400, right? I shouldn't have put this comma here. So it's $400. So they're going to pay you $400. And so then you can view it essentially they owe you $10,400. That's essentially how much they borrowed you because they're not going to give it to you just then. You're going to get all your money back at the end. So at the end, they're going to have to pay you another 4%. But this time it's not going to be off of the 10,000, it's going to be off of the $10,400. So 10,400 times 0.04 4 times 0 is 0, 4 times 0 is 0. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. 4 times 1 is 4. And then we have two numbers behind the decimal point. So now they're going to pay you $416, the second payment. So the total amount, what was the total amount of interest? So it's going to be 416 plus 400, which is $816, right? 400 plus 416 is equal to $816 which is choice C. 
I'm a little surprised that they expect you to know what compounding semi-annually means. But since there, it's there, I guess you should know it. When it means compound semi-annually, that means that each sem- semi-annual point in time, you divide the annual interest rate by two, and you get that much. And then, but then the next interest that you get is off of not just the initial amount, but it's the initial amount plus the previous interest because they haven't paid you yet. But anyway, I hope you don't find that too confusing. You might want to look it up on the internet. You could also compound monthly or daily or continuously. I actually have a couple of videos on that on the Khan Academy. But anyway, I'm all out of time, so I'll see you.